This is a video demonstration of how to prepare an intravenous insulin infusion. These steps should be used for preparing both fixed and variable rate insulin infusions for diabetic patients. Before you begin, there are a number of checks you should carry out. The first of these is to ensure you have both the patient's medicines chart and their insulin chart. The insulin infusion itself should always be prescribed on one of the designated sections of the insulin chart, but all patients will also need IV fluids to be administered alongside the insulin, and these should be prescribed on the medicines chart in the IV section at the back. Next, you need to go to the patient, and once you have confirmed their identity, you should check that they are available and happy for the infusion to go ahead, making sure they understand what is involved. At this point, you should check the patient has a working cannula in place and check the VIP score. Delivery of the fluid solution and the insulin must be via a single cannula, so check you have an octopus in place unless your patient has a central line, in which case you need to use two lumens. You also need to make sure they've had a recent blood glucose recorded. For administration, you'll need to use both a syringe driver and an infusion pump, so check you have these and set them up at the patient's bedside. Lastly, you need to ensure you have an appropriate second checker available and it's a good idea to let them know you'll be needing them shortly. Once you are satisfied with all of these checks, enter the area you will be preparing the infusion in and wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water. Select a visually clean tray and clean all sides with wipes containing a detergent and a disinfectant. And whilst the tray is drying, use the same type of wipes to clean your trolley. You are now ready to begin gathering your equipment and don't forget to check expiry dates of items as you do. Here is an overview of what you will need. A bottle or bag of IV sodium chloride 0.9%, a vial of Actrapid insulin, this will be stored in the fridge, a curly extendable administration line for your insulin infusion, the bag of IV fluids that's been prescribed on the medicines chart, an IV administration set for the fluids, at least five disinfectant wipes, two drawing up needles, a 50ml syringe to deliver the insulin infusion, an insulin syringe to measure the insulin units in, 10ml of sodium chloride 0.9% for a flush and a 10ml IV syringe also for the flush, a drug infusion label and you'll also need a small sharp spin. Once you have everything you need, you should wash or decontaminate your hands again and put on an apron and gloves. You can now begin to set up your ANTT preparation area in your clean tray. Open your insulin vial and decontaminate with disinfectant wipes before placing it in the tray, taking care to clean and protect the key parts as you do. Repeat this process with the sodium chloride bottle and ampule. Remove each of the syringes from the outer packaging and place in the tray attaching the needles to both of the IV syringes before you do so. Don't forget to also place your extendable line in the tray, just opening the ends slightly of the packaging to allow attachment to the syringe. Try to always keep your preparation area clear from rubbish and discard this as you proceed. You will now need your second checker to be present before you prepare any of your products. Check the details of the prescription with your checker then begin to withdraw 49.5 mL of sodium chloride 0.9% into your 50 mL syringe. Next, select your insulin vial, checking name and expiry dates with your checker. Visually inspect the vial and gently roll it before withdrawing 50 units using your insulin syringe. Remove the needle from your 50ml syringe and add the 50 units of Actrapid into the sodium chloride. Invert the syringe several times to ensure the insulin is dispersed. Now connect your 50ml syringe to the curly extendable administration line and return it to the tray. Prepare a sodium chloride flush at this point just in case there are any problems with the patient's line at the administration stage. Complete the details on the drug infusion label, including both signatures, and attach it to the 50ml syringe. Take care not to obscure the gradient markings so you can check the syringe is infusing correctly at regular intervals. You are now ready to return to the patient. Don't forget to take with you both the insulin and the medicines chart, the tray containing the insulin infusion, 
the IV fluids, a spare pair of gloves, some disinfectant wipes, and you will also need your second checker to be present to check your patient identity and your administration rates. At the patient's bedside, you should both confirm the patient's identity and they are happy to proceed. Attach your 50ml insulin infusion into the syringe driver and once in place, purge the line whilst keeping the other end in your clean tray. Set the rate as prescribed on the insulin chart and ensure your second checker confirms this. Now check the fluids that have been prescribed on the medicines chart. Attach the IV administration set and, keeping the end in your clean tray, set this to run through your infusion pump. You should now decontaminate your hands and put on clean gloves before you touch the patient. Use your disinfectant wipes to clean each port separately and let them dry before connecting one to the insulin infusion line and the other to the IV fluids. You may now safely begin the infusions. But finally you should check the patient isn't in any pain as the infusions begin and dispose of any rubbish into clinical waste. Then remove your gloves and wash your hands with soap and water before you both sign the prescription and insulin charts and make sure you record the asset numbers of both infusion devices you are using. Clean your tray and finally make sure you are familiar with what monitoring the patient requires. That's the end of this video guide, we hope you found it useful. In summary, here are the key points. Make sure you maintain ANTT throughout. Always use a specific insulin syringe for measuring insulin. Ensure appropriate fluids run concurrently with the insulin infusion. Where possible, work in an area where disturbances are minimised. The accuracy of all products used, including dose, volumes, rate and pump settings, must be second checked and monitor the patient in line with the appropriate pathway, remembering to use the opposite hand for blood glucose monitoring. Thank you for watching.